Good afternoon, everybody. It's Simon Anderson. I'm here with Lucy Rogers. Lucy was arrested for silently holding a sign at a pro-Palestine demonstration in November, uh, and she was counter-demonstrating at a pro-Palestine demonstration here in Auckland uh, on Saturday. Can you tell us what happened, Ms. Rogers? Sure. So I was um, at a pro-Palestine protest on Saturday with a sign saying Hamas raped, tortured and murdered 1,200 Israeli civilians on October 7th, 2023. Which, is, by the way, is something that dozens of people have denied to my face ever happened at, at these protests. Um, there were two incidents of concern. One was when I was walking down Queen Street beside the protest. Um, I was on the opposite side of the footpath from uh, the protesters who were in the road and the footpaths on Queen Street are really wide so there was a significant space between me and the protesters. I was approached by two police officers who threatened to arrest me if I continued walking down Queen Street with my son. Uh, I, I won't go into further detail than that, that, that that's, that's the essence of it. The second incident was when the march was coming to an end uh, the protesters were walking from Queen Street into the square outside Britmart. I wanted to go and stand uh, in a spot where they could see my sign. Um, and I had a number of police officers approach me and directly threaten me with arrest uh, if I stood where I intended to stand uh, within view of the protest. Um, and they then admitted to me on camera, and I have a recording of this, that the reason for that was that they had had complaints from the protesters about the content of my sign and they were upset about it. It seems to me police have a difficult job striking a balance between keeping the peace and upholding citizens' rights, particularly to freedom of expression and freedom of movement. Have we found the right balance, do you think? Um, well, to answer that very, uh, very briefly, um, I think that where someone has maintained space, which I did in both of the incidents that I just described, there was space between me and the protesters on Queen Street, maybe 10 metres or so, and there was maybe 80 metres between me and the protesters in the second incident, or at least where I proposed to stand and the protesters. Where there is space, where I'm maintaining a physical distance and being responsible, where I'm silent, so I'm not shouting at anyone, I'm not threatening anyone, I'm not causing a scene, silently holding a sign with distance and where there's, there have been no threats to attack me, where no one's come at me with a knife, there's, where there's no indication that they're going to assault me, um, that the, the police should not be intervening, um, intervening or interfering with my right to protest in those circumstances. I understand, Ms Rogers, you intend to keep counter-demonstrating. What are the objectives you're hoping to achieve? Um, well, I think my first objective is to uphold the right to protest. Um, and that's, uh, that's why I've been protesting every week since November last year when I was arrested. Uh, I was so shocked by that that I thought, no, I need to protect the right to protest in this country. Um, so I will turn up weekly until these protests end. Uh, so that's my first objective. The second objective is to convey a message both to the protesters and to the New Zealand public that actually there is balance here. There's another side to the story here, that actually Israel has just suffered, suffered a genocide of its people. And we're not talking about that. Um, I'm not a pro-Israel protester per se. I think that many of the things that they're doing are, are evil and wrong uh, in Gaza. I, I don't agree with that stuff. Um, so I'm not a pro-Israel protester, but I am an anti-hypocrisy protester. I am an anti-lies protester. I am anti-anti-Semitism. Uh, and that is, that is my other objective in protesting. I understand the Free Speech Union is launching high court action against police on your behalf. What are the developments in that case? Um, yep, they've, they've told me that they're um, going to back me financially, that they'll fund a lawsuit in Auckland High Court, a civil lawsuit. Uh, against the police officers who uh, arrested me. Um, that has been on hold for a bit while we got a contract worked out between me and them. 
uh, but that was signed this week, so uh, the lawsuit should be commenced in the, in the very near future. I see. There's also an IPCA investigation from your arrest in November. What are developments with that investigation? Uh, well, they told me in January that they would be interviewing the police officers who arrested me in March, so that's around about now, and that they wanted to analyse uh, the circumstances of my case in combination with uh, some similar protests or, sorry, some similar, some similar complaints recently, um, like the Albert Park protest and the parliamentary protests, where according to them, and they didn't specify what, there are similar legal issues arising. So their report on that will be coming out apparently in about June, although I can't say that for sure, it could be later, we'll have to see, but it will be public. Thank you for your time this afternoon, Ms Rogers. But before we finish, is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, just one thing really, and that is, I saw some people saying online that the police officer who was threatening to arrest me on Saturday should lose his job. A couple of things to say about that. Well, first and foremost, I don't agree that he should lose his job. I don't want him to lose his job. I actually think that he's a decent man who had genuine concerns about safety um, and who, on top of that, was actually um, under orders from his senior sergeant about where I could and could not stand. So he was getting a bad rap when it actually wasn't his fault. Um, but quite apart from that, I mean, I wouldn't want the senior sergeant to lose his job either. Um, I think that this isn't a case of a couple of rogue police officers who are just going off and breaking the law and doing their own thing. Um, there is an endemic problem within the police where they have got away with the sort of behaviour for years and years. It's normal for them to arrest people in, um, in, in, in situations like mine. They think that it's okay to arrest people for breach of the peace. What I want is not for people to lose their jobs, which won't do any good because these are good people, or at least the man I was dealing with, I, I believe he was a good person. I, I don't want him to lose his job. What I want is for the police to be properly educated about civics, about civil rights, and about the right to protest and about what they can and cannot do when a protester wants to communicate a message to a hostile audience. Wonderful. Well, thank you very much for your time, Ms Rogers. Good afternoon. Afternoon.